Hi. Hey, for those of you out there watching this, this is uh, the series Meet the Leaders at Loan Depot, and we've got Brenda Henry on with us, our very own branch manager of Tustin. Hi, Brenda. Hello, Steve. How are you? I'm doing great. Hey, so why don't we start? Can you tell us, you know, a little bit about how long you've been at Loan Depot and what your branch looks like, and then we'll have some fun learning more. Sure. Um, I've been at Loan Depot about, well, I just celebrated my fifth anniversary. Um, I have about 20, 28 employees right now, and um, we are a mixture of builder and resale. Yeah, you guys do a lot of builder business, right? Yeah, we're probably, it's split probably 60, 40, 60 builder, 40 resale right now. That's so fun. Yeah, very diversified. Hey, what is it like? I mean, right now in this environment, obviously there's a lot of refi business, builders can't build homes fast enough. Like how does that, how does that come into play with what you have to deal with every month, getting loans closed and just supporting the team? Yeah, we have a lot of builder business going on right now. Like you said, they can't keep the houses, they can't build them fast enough right now. So um, with the refis, we really have made our priorities purchases and we've just set the proper expectations with our refis and just help them to understand that we're going to close them. We're going to get them done. But we, you know, we have a borrower that's got a moving truck or a family that needs to get moved into a house. And usually people are pretty good about understanding that. Yeah. And then traditionally with builders, isn't the fourth quarter like, you know, when they try to push most of their houses yeah. and have people move in and close them? Yep, we can we're, be for sure. We're in that we are going to have a... Yeah, the end of the year is going to be a very big year for us this year. Last year wasn't as much, but this year, yeah, we're we're going to hit quite a few loans in December. So it'll be uh, it'll be an interesting end of the year for us for sure. That's cool. Well, I've I've loved working with you, and I know we you know have fun talking to people and setting up meetings. But hey, what as we get into like just learning a little bit more about you, like what what sets you apart as a leader in the mortgage business, and you know what do you do to stay on top of your game? as a manager of one of our larger branches in Orange County. Yeah. You know, I've uh, been a branch manager for, I've been in the business over 33 years, but I've been a branch manager for 23 years. And I think people ask me this question all the time. And I would say, I am the, I am probably the quickest solution oriented person you'll meet. For me, I figured out that people are panicked in our industry when things are not going right. And I'm pretty level-headed. And so if you ask anybody on my team, they'll say solutions. That's me. I'll get to a solution. I'll get it there quickly. And then I'll backtrack. You know, I'll try to fix what's wrong after the fact, but I'm pretty quick at making everything get finished, get quickly done. Um, so I would say I'm more solution oriented than most people. That probably comes into handy. I mean, it, my dad always told me that this is, he was a mortgage guy, but you know, this industry is all about problems. You, you know, run DURLP, it basically gives you a list of all the problems you got to solve before you can fund a loan, right? And then You're after exactly funds, right. you don't want it to be a problem for you after that comes back. So you got to do it all right up front. Yeah. And when there's a problem, people, I mean, it's the largest purchase they're going to make in their life. And so everybody starts to panic. And so somebody has to come in and be able to look at it and make a quick decision and then backtrack and fix the systems where it broke down and figure out what happened. But not at that point. At that point, I want a solution. Like, how am I going to get it fixed? There's a borrower on the other end. And so I really put my mind to that. And I think that that has helped me in my industry, in, in my job for a long yeah, time. Yeah, I bet. Well, it takes a, the stress off of the plate of the originators you're supporting too, so they can go out and build relationships yeah. and continue to develop their business. Um, yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Hey, what, what do you love about work every day? I mean, this is a crazy time for us. And I know everybody's got, you know, twice as much stuff on their plate as they normally do. Like, what do you love about this environment that keeps you fired up when you show up in the morning? You know, I'm a puzzle person. So <laughs> it's the easiest way to put it. I love puzzles. So this industry was perfect for me when I got into it. You're always putting a puzzle together. You're always trying to figure out what fits where and how you make it happen. And I love challenges. So right now we have a lot of challenges, but Every morning when I wake up, the most important thing to me, and my people will tell you this, is I, the first thing I think about is how do I add value? How can I add value to my people to help them where they're trying to go? That's, that's what gets me going. That's what I love about my job. And when people grow and, you know, people are having the best years of their lives right now, and they're so stoked and they're hitting milestones. And that's, that's what's getting me up every day. I know it's stressful and there's a lot on our plate, but that part of it is what really gets me going. Yeah. I, I was just thinking about something because you do you do some special things for your team as well. You do the is it the Myers Briggs test, and then you have people look at your social media and give them some feedback on. I do. Like you, you go out of your way and 
I don't even, I don't want to say it's a non-traditional way, but I don't think a lot of managers like try to help people understand, you know, how they think and what makes them tick. And then are they doing things the right way? What, what made you kind of choose to do that? And so I'm a, um, I'm a big team person. So culture is big in my office. So we did the testing and we shared with everybody what we were just to make it more cohesive. Everybody understood what other people were, were thinking, you know, maybe they get, understand them a little bit better. And so we did, it was a lot of fun to hear. Or, you know, people were like, oh my gosh, it's you. I didn't know that. It was really, <laughs> it was really it awesome. Team. It was so fun to do. Um, and it built more of the culture, but I'm big on that because you need to understand what makes people tick. And if you know what makes them tick and you understand where they're trying to go, it's way easier in our job. Um, so yeah, we love to do those types of things and my team loves it too. So it's been great because we're on zoom now. So we've been able to do these things on zoom. These are things that are good for zoom calls for sure. Oh, definitely. You know, it's interesting too, because you said, I mean, yours is a culture. I mean, I think a lot of branches have culture and yours is built on culture. What's it like in this remote environment, keeping culture at the center of like your team and everybody tied to the vision and where you're going and, you know, getting what they need out of it? It is really, it's been a really big transition for us because like, like I've told you and everybody knows, I built my branch on culture five years ago and we, you go into our office and people would be like, wow, you guys have such great energy. Well, to take that energy and put it on a Zoom call is way different. So I've really had to think about how do you set that up and how do you create that culture? And it's still a work in progress, but trying to get people to feed off of each other and keeping people engaged. And, you know, I'm keeping a very close pulse on my people right now. I do a lot of one-on-ones. We do a lot of Zoom calls, just really trying to create that energy that we had in the office remotely because we're going to be remote for a while. So I think we're getting it. It's taken us a little bit, but you know, we're a work in progress. Yeah. I bet you're doing a great job. I mean, it's more, oh, thanks. it's the effort and people engaging. You have a phenomenal team. Hey, and I know we yeah. didn't, I didn't ask you this question, but like, what is your branch going to fund this year? You think? We will probably be close to 700 million, 750 million, maybe a little That's bit. It. That's it. I'm just kidding. What did you guys do? <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. October will be our biggest month uh, ever, obviously. Oh. That's got to feel great to me. Yeah. It's so weird. We'll close in October. What we were closing three years, three years ago in a year. No way. And you, what about year over year growth? 2019 to 2020. Last year we closed 275 this year. Wow. 150. So it's been a little of a bit of an adjustment for us, but we've, we've come through it pretty good. That's exciting. Well, I love working with you because of all the things that, you know, you're sharing with people. It's like you care you genuinely care about people and wanting to understand them so you can help them probably, you know, be as efficient as possible and accomplish their goals. Yeah, for sure. You know, you go out of your way to kind of make sure the team is a team and engaged and having fun and feeling like they're part of something. So I know that, you know, outside of closing loans, you know, operations, product and price and comp that is important for everybody, regardless of what we all want to believe. It's like, this is a work, it's a work family, you know, and you marry into it. You marry yep. into it and you got to, you got to be close to the people you work with, you know, otherwise sure. over time it doesn't work. Um, all right. Last, last question uh, or just something to learn. What do you do outside of this mortgage business when you're not supporting people and, you know, doing my first and foremost, <laughs> I'm a wife of a loan officer. So I still am that <laughs> I've been that for a long time. I have three kids. I have five grandkids. No way. A puppy, a bulldog puppy. Um, so that keeps me busy, but I love to golf. I love anything with water. And like I said before, I love puzzles. So I Wait a minute, back to the golf. Do you have a can- handicap? Like, are you playing enough? No, to- I'm not that on. good. I've been taking yeah. lessons forever. I just like it because it's a, ch- again, I love challenges and puzzles. And to me, it's a challenge. That is definitely a puzzle sport for sure. Yeah, club, for sure. You know, so I enjoy swing? it. And I did it because my husband plays golf and I was like, man, when I retire, I want to be a widow, a golf widow. So <laughs> So that's how I did it. I'm a big fan of golf. So I'm glad you're playing. We'll have to go out. Yeah, and play yeah. some well, hey, thank you for all you do and the partnership. And for anybody out there watching this, you know, hopefully you learn a little bit more about Brenda other than when you have a conversation with her and we're talking about, you know, should we work together or not? So just want to say thank you and uh, appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you as well. Take care.